The Brandon Peters Show may contain explicit language and detailed plot points. For more information on the show, stay tuned to the end of the episode. Here's Brandon. Welcome back to Old Teen Show. I'm Brandon, and this is my classmate, Jessica. Hello. Hello, Jessica. Uh, this Hi, edition B. of I've Old you B in my entire life. I hey, know. BP. BP. No? I don't know. Whatever. That, I will that, accept whatever you call me. All right. I accept. Am I gonna get fired? Let no. me guess. This is gonna be the second to last time we record together, <laughs> isn't it? Oh, uh, we'll talk when we hit stop. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, this edition of Old Teen Show covers the first and only season of the short-lived 1992 show, The Heights. The truth. The true. Uh, the story of a local rock band, twenty somethings called The Heights, living in a suburb called The Heights. The show is called. The Heights, uh, Foxes, The Heights. Today, we are discussing the 12th episode, Things That Go Bump in the Night. Jessica, what's going on with The Heights this week? Jody and Dizzy go to Lamaze class. JT hits on the wrong woman. And Rita and Hope get job interviews. All right. This one is directed by John Nicolella again and written by Eric Roth and Tony. Spear. Uh. Dacus. Uh, this also has guest star Tracy Scoggins. Do you recognize Tracy Scoggins? I don't, but I assume she is the woman that JT hit on. Mm-hmm. Okay. She or is. maybe she's the one hiring an, an assistant. No. Uh no. She's the one that, no. Okay. We'll get to the one hiring an assistant right after Tracy Scoggins. So Tracy Scoggins. She is very well known for her participation on a little show called Babylon 5. She played Colonel Elizabeth Lockley. So people oh. go nuts about her there. She starred, she did a lot of big uh, guest starring things in like the 90s. Um, she was on She was on Dynasty for a bit in the 80s. She uh, did uh, an episode of D Space Nine. Uh, she, I knew her best. Uh, she played Cat Grant on Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman with Terry Hatcher and Dean Kane. She oh, wow. was the sassy gossip reporter that was all Ooh. about Clark Kent. Uh, this is before that, I believe. Um, and you mentioned the, uh, the woman at the magazine, Gloria Rubin, who she is a, like, well... Uh, renowned actor um she i've she was on uh mr robot for many years I was say, she looked very familiar and mm-hmm. i didn't even take the chance to look yeah i mean uh, it's like she's her face is everywhere i bet i've seen right. her so many times and i didn't realize it yeah i mean she's been on she's had uh, recurring roles on like uh blue bloods cloak of dagger blind spots uh let's go falling skies law and order special victims unit uh raising the bar er she was on that for uh, many years and like just a, a lot of uh, some, some movie roles here and there, but mo- mainly she was a, it's been a TV. She was on homicide life on the street. So, I mean, she, you, you see her, you recognize her. She's in a lot of stuff. So some, uh, some big guns here on the guest starring in the penultimate. This is actually, this is actually for the people in the United States. And when this aired, this is the last episode of the Heights. So I may have mentioned that. It was canc- it was canceled. The 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 episode we'll be doing next, uh, the final episode, never aired. I didn't know that. Never Which aired. Would actually explain uh... why the episode we watched was the way we watched it next time. Right, totally um, different language. That's fine. Uh, well, yeah, subtitles and whatnot. Yeah. So this was this was it. The heights was canceled. It w- didn't air its final episode. Like I always think it's kind of petty, right? Like we're not gonna do your final episode. You know, like. Why not? Like you have one left. 
It's December. You don't have any new programming. Would you bump it for a holiday special, like a Mad TV Christmas special or something? Like, t- what would you have bumped it for? 10 p.m. on a Saturday night. Throw it there. Let people finish the show. Like, Do you remember when this was? the episodes were airing? Well, this you know, had to have been December because... We like keep what, getting day of the week? Billboard Music Awards. I think it was like a Tuesday. Not a not the big night of the week. Or was it Thursday? Because the Thursday the was uh, 90210, right? Wednesday was 90210. Oh, Wednesday was 90210. And with Melrose Place. Place. Yeah, Melrose mm-hmm. Place got the benefit of being paired with 90210. So this episode, the Heights ended on November 19th, 1992, uh, which was a Thursday. It was Thursday night TV. <gasps> Ooh, so they kind of tea. Okay. Wow. So they Spoiler put it on before the-, the end of this episode. They Big. said, hey, tune in next Thursday for Thursday night comedy on Fox. They We're doubled have- up with the Lemon Color. They were yeah. like classic- now it's on Thursday and s- whatever Saturday or Sunday. Oh, yeah. it so they oh they basically were saying, hey, heads up, we're gonna not Yeah, it's not happening. So we're gonna like air Martin and Living Color. Right. And they're um, throwing, they were showing old in Lemon Color. It's like season one. They were like, yeah, go back mm-hmm. to season one before the new episode. So they're like, get out the heights. Which back then would be amazing because you can't just go to a Netflix and just pick your episodes, pick a season, start from right. scratch. So you to see to at the beginning, you're like, amazing. You had to have been like people like Jessica and I that taped entire seasons of shows. Yeah. On VHS. And I'd only later. keep the commercials if I had to set the timer and I couldn't be there to hit pause and record. Mm-hmm. But most of the time I would pause... The commercials because I took pride, like I was producing, like an the editor, show. yeah, yeah. Oh, it was, it was a big deal, and I would always unpause it for the promo of the show. Mm-hmm. So if they're teasing The Simpsons later, I'm like, oh, gotta record this part. Yeah, so silly. Well, I would do also. I would do black screen um, with my Mario Paint, so I'd record like just a dark screen. Oh, that's much and deeper. So, than that's awesome. And I would, I would take my tape that I taped it on and edit it, which is losing quality, but man, <laughs> the edit was good. You take it and you'd hit the black screen. Like when it faded out, you'd hit the black screen there and it fade back in on a, on like another. It was a way oh, wow. too much time, but I, I I did that with uh, Seinfeld. Oh, cool! <laughs> my 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 VHS is of Seinfeld. I I did that with. Um, but yeah, my Batman and Get Smart. I had both those series in their entirety on VHSs. Um, but they did not have that. I need to upload Doctor Doctor. You need to save the world. The VHS tapes because we'll every do time I mention Doctor show. Doctor. It'd be amazing. And people keep like, no, oh, there is a Dr. Doctor show. And they send me links. I'm like, no, 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 it's the wrong show. I'm talking about from like 1990. It was on CBS. Right. Matt Frewer. If you're not sending me that, don't bother. Don't um, bother. Because I'm sure I can add to YouTube. And if they say anything, I'm like, bitch, it's nowhere else. Let it live. Let it live. Let it live. Like I talk about, um, it'll be a few weeks since it uh, aired when this drops. But uh, I was talking about certain movies and things. If access isn't being provided, I don't feel guilty watching someone's uploaded stream from like an old VHS tape or something. If you if you have the rights to it and you're not giving it or providing it for people to have, you can't complain when they are getting it from somewhere. Right. You know, that that's granted. Some things could have legal situations is why, but still like, I, well, how am I supposed to watch? It? I want to see it. Is it on a streaming service? No. Is, right. it, is it on DVD? No. Is it on Blu-ray? No. Then it's probably not on 4K Ultra HD. How much is a VHS of it on uh, eBay? Oh, it's not on VHS. Well, or yeah. the VHS is a hundred and some dollars on eBay. No. So I, someone uploads the heights to a certain site we all like to see. Well, hey, that's how we watch it. Mm-hmm. Hey, it worked. Yeah. Even and though that, we still haven't seen the first episode all the way through. Yeah. And there's a I wonder. There's an old so during. Um, We'll get to the heights and stuff in a sec, folks. But uh, <laughs> it's gonna be worth it. There's a, a science fiction show I always wanted to watch. Uh, access in the United States was not available, but during lockdown here, I watched uh, the entire series of Blake Seven. It's a British science fiction show created by Terry Nation, who was the creator of the Daleks, uh, Doctor Who's villain. He created them and claimed, you know, came to fame off that and started other TV series. Um, it was on YouTube and I watched it all there, but it recently got pulled from YouTube that channel did, but you know what? It's going to be on BritBox. The That's British good. Stream. So they realize there's a demand. 
makes they sense. got they did the right thing and now it's like all mm-hmm. right we're going to stream it now i can you pay, pay and it. watch shut down everything else i will pay for doctor doctor if you want to mm-hmm. put it somewhere digitally right for sure that's what i'm saying if you have act like if you if you can put it out if you're mad then i i don't mind if you're shutting a place down because you're going to put it up and you have the rights do it but if you're not, I'm the only person in the entire country that's advocating to get Doctor Doctor. They probably destroyed somehow. those tapes over at whatever network they had. And that's I don't understand. And I was hoping Matt Frewer would go to like these Walker Stalker cons because when he joined mm. Fear the Walking Dead, I'm like, that's all I want to ask him about. Is like, hey, sign my my not Max Headroom. No, 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 not. Tell me about Matt Frewer and Doctor Doctor years. S- send Mike's me my him. sign my Hitachi. These BHA just tape that's <laughs> I recorded it on EP so I could get more episodes <laughs> and sign it, please. He'd think that was the coolest thing. I yeah. think he would. I'm like, yeah, I appreciate it when you showed up in Watchmen, but like, really, what happened? Do you know? Do, can you make a phone call? Come on. <laughs> doctor, Whatever. doctor of the doctor. Um, so this. Upload it. This week, those are our guest stars. That was a little bit of banter. We got more banter about commercials. This is our last. This isn't our last one with commercials, but it is our last one really with commercials that you're familiar with. Commercials that, from the United States. From the United States. Yeah. Um, kicking off a Macaulay Culkin Sprite commercial that's obviously tying back into Home Alone 2, uh, where he meets a girl. They're like... He keeps tricking her that like, oh no, you're nothing's real. We're on a movie set, and she ends up being like cardboard. That was really funny. Him. Yeah, it was a really cool camera trick. I, I liked enjoyed it. it. Yeah, there was also this old man cream of wheat commercial. It was like well, my day, blah blah blah, and the kids like uh, it could have been done today. Like could be kids yeah. in their phones and da da da. It's like, but grandpa, I like this old man shit too. Like, Pretty much his yeah. grandson in his hip tie dye t shirt. Mm-hmm. You know, he could have been wearing overalls. I don't remember. Whatever. Really right. Cool. Backwards cap that looks fun. Yeah. Hip kid. Him is a Walkman. Yeah. Yeah. Can't get off them Walkmans, them kids. That's all they do. Get their head and their ears in them Walkmans. Um, U2's got Zoo TV coming. It's a big deal. People care. Uh, uh, this week on Melrose Place, Allison is missing. Billy is upset Billy suspects the worst Courtney Thorne Smith's character Allison yeah oh, no we share a same the same birthday oh you do uh we with do. the the star of chairman of the board Is with that so Courtney Thorne she Smith? was the love interest yeah she was the love interest <laughs> to carrot top in that movie which oh jeez I don't recommend that movie but look up Norm Macdonald Courtney Thorne Smith on Conan O'Brien I will you Norm will McDonald thank can me. do no wrong he can't and this is one of his shining moments is this, um, yeah, on the couch with Courtney Soren Smith. You will, if you're not laughing, um, we'll talk, but that is, that is a great thing. Uh, General Foods uh, International Coffees has a, to- we totally fucked one night after eating chocolate commercial with coffee. <laughs> it's these, this couple and they're like, Mm, it smells like Vienna. Oh yeah, I was like, you remember that? My, this this is my favorite night in Vienna. But we didn't go out or anything. She's like, mm-hmm, I know. <laughs> that's the best way to describe it. Good job. Yeah, yeah but that's totally. I mean, I'm like, so yeah, getting raunchy there. Um, uh, the Wendy's melt is 50s themed, and uh, Dave Thomas says, "Okay, Daddy O, slip me some skin." Oh, yeah. He's so out of touch even in the early 90s. But it was good to yeah. see Dave Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. Dave, in a good while. Old, good old Dave. I went to the Auburn Court Duesenberg uh, Festival when I was a kid one time, and he was the commissioner of it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Went by in a car. Like, it's random. Yeah. It's a factoid about Brandon and Dave Thomas. There you go. We were in the same place at the same time once. <laughs> but I didn't really care about that. I would... I, Cared about going to the Falcons Hangar, a cool comic book store that was there. But yeah, there's a Dan Cortez uh, Burger King commercial. He is leading the charge here, and they have Aladdin magic cups. They change they color. changed colors. Pretty sick. Crazy. I think I had one of these. I think I had one of these. I don't think I did. I'm kind of jealous. I was all a I could think is, I wish so, yeah. I still had them because we used to keep all the cups. Like mm. uh, Village Pantry had like Bob and Tom cups if you were in Indiana back in the day, like growing up with Q95. Mm-hmm. And those were the biggest deal ever. 
Then you go to McDonald's and you collect like, what is it? Not Space Jam before that, like just the Looney Tunes cups or stuff like that. Okay. You know? Just regular like, Looney Tunes. Anytime, anything you could collect. Lion King had a whole line somewhere. Yeah. Maybe it was a Burger King. I had the Batman cups from Batman and uh, Batman Forever, but Taco Bell. Oh, that's so cool. I had, I had those. I wish I still had them. Those are my, yeah. those are my faves. I like those. And then. Someone did like Batman Forever got like mugs. I think it was a, that was the deal with Batman Forever. Of course but, it did. Of course it did. Uh, we have the oh, uh, down the shores, a new comedy coming out. It's probably going to replace the Heights on Thursday nights, but new Fox comedy lineup next Thursday. We're going comedy. I oh did, God, it did say next Thursday. I yeah. didn't catch that. I don't remember uh, this show, but I'm not like I, I want to watch it. I don't know why. It probably sucks, but I'm like. Why not? Three guys, three girls, one beach house. I was like, yeah, I thought that was the title of the show. I was like, did they meet two guys, a girl in a pizza place to this little <laughs> naming convention? No, no, no. It's down the shore. Uh, oh, the uh, Oh Holy Night. Four records, two cassette tapes featuring Crystal Gale, and Murray, the Judds, and Reba McIntyre singing like the most like in your face Christian Christmas tunes you could possibly imagine. I miss those commercials. Now you just see them as parodies. Right. Where the, the music scrolling and then changes, you know. Yeah. About the commercial. It was delightful. Like, hey, what did you think of the 90s? Well, I uh, I had my slap bracelet on and I had a good time, didn't I, Dan? Oh, yes, Bethany. But what about the music? Like Britney Spears. No, no, no. Oh my Where gosh, can I find <laughs> Britney Spears, Jamiroquai, uh, Joan Osborne? Where can I find all this? Well, I have a deal for you. Call one nine hundred. Da 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 da. And that's that's what you would have. I think I had a Billboard Music Awards. Uh, no, it was the Grammys. You could start getting CDs for Grammy winners, and I had one. It was the year that Seal had. Uh, Kissed by a Rose was on there. There was Michael Jackson's on on there, I think. Mm -hmm. That was a big deal. My my pleasure, my pain. Down the Shore only lasted for 29 episodes, but that was a lot more than... uh, Uh, 16 more than the Heights. Yeah. But those were half hours, right? So double... So it lasted that plus in thir- living color yeah. replaced the heights. I think. So it lasts in like 14.5 in heights terms episodes, right? Was, oh, yes. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Mm. Um, there's a Domino's Nintendo contest surrounding Mario Kart on Super Nintendo and new twisty bread. <laughs> Bring it back. Well, actually, I really like Domino's with my kids right now. I don't know why they want like Domino's is where they want pizza from, but Domino's has really good stuffed cheesy bread. I will say that. I don't know if I've ever gotten the cheesy bread. I'm sure I have at some point. You can get it like stuffed with jalapenos if you want or like bacon. We just get the regular plain ones because my kids are wimps and won't eat jalapenos with me. But uh, really good. Really good. Pizza. If you get it fresh, it can hit the spot, but Mm -hmm. rolling the dice. But that's where my kids are like, Domino's. I'm like, fuck, we got better. But you got to deal. Pepperoni pizza just covers the entire pizza. There you it's go. kind of fun. It's fun. It's fun. Uh, Batman. The, the, oh, I'm oh. sorry. No, go ahead. Did you see the Nintendo Mario Paint commercial again? We've seen yeah. this earlier. Mm-hmm. That's Jonathan Taylor Thomas doing the voice. It over. is I, confirmed. I, I love it. I'm like, there's JTT. There you go. When I had him on my wall. <laughs> Actually, it was before I had him on my wall. Because that was before The Lion King and Home Improvement, I think. Wait, when did Home Improvement yeah. come out? You would have been introduced to him around Home Improvement, right? Yeah, I yeah. think he became the heartthrob with Ryder Strong and yeah, that, Elijah Wood was even on like poster, oh yeah. like those posters, the Teen Bop and stuff. He had that movie with Chevy Chase. It was a Man of the House. Yes, there and then come. there was Tom and Huck. Yes, I had that also on VH. I think I have it upstairs still. Um, Ninety one is Home Improvement. So yeah, he mm. would have already been working on Home Improvement. Gotcha. I didn't. I don't think I put any pictures of girls up in my room like that yeah when you're a young girl you're like boy crazy right i did have i did have the rolling stone cover of i would sneak them in through movie posters um (laughs) i don't know i had the the rolling stone cover in college one year of um jennifer love hewitt who was a long who was a long time crush of mine 
Um, sorry, pretty. sorry to gener- sorry for to miss Love Hewitt, but my wife beat her out in the end. Yeah, your loss, J Love. But I had a, I had a Rolling Stone cover on my wall, and I had a girlfriend, and like we like started, and she's like, "That needs to come down." What? Yeah, like were you under eighteen? That needs. She I, said that I was like twenty one. Oh, it's still that needs to come down. No. She felt threatened. I think after school, maybe like if you guys were dating, it's really serious yeah. and you're moving into a home, but right. Yeah. Th- I'm not putting up weird. like, but yeah, it was, and it wasn't that bad of a cover. It was just like, I had a subscription to Rolling Stone. I'm like, well, that's the celebrity I have a crush on. Yeah. Not a, yeah. And we were, we were living in it's Indiana. It's not like, Oh. oh, this 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 commercial is going way up. So I made a mistake when I moved out to Los Angeles. Like I didn't realize. So you know, everybody growing up stuff is like, who's your one, right? Like who's who's the one? Like you're you you and your spouse have that. If something would happen, you'd be okay with it, right? You have that. It's usually top five, but yeah, the top, one. Okay, top five, one. I'm in Los Angeles, and I just moved there. It was like my, I think my first year, and I was I brought this up. I was like, everybody, everybody's got that. But everybody's looking at me like, like you creepy bastard. I didn't realize where I live. That stuff actually happens there because they live with us. Like yeah, but even friends did an entire episode on it. The list. They right. all had a top five because yeah. Ross laminates his. He yeah. removes Isabella Rossellini because yeah. she's too international. Runs into her in the coffee shop. Yeah. Tells her. He's like, you're on my list. She's like, can I see it? He's yeah. like, oh, no. My coworkers did not like this. And they were like, that stuff happens here. That ruins lives. I'm like, oh, well, okay. I'm from Hoosier, whatever. Yeah. You're still, like, allowed to, oh. you're still allowed to have your one. Right. And then if you do run into him, you start working with him, obviously it becomes a professional thing. And you're like, yeah, I was just kidding. Right. Whatever. Right. Like mine was Sandler, but as I got older, it's like, really, it's more of a a love, like respect for him oh, yeah. and like what he did. And they, right. he, well, he I'm like, putting out comedy. So it's not like I would ever. Try yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like, sir, you're telling me you and your wife would say no to Chris Hemsworth, both of you. No you joke. Would? You would. You have you seen that man? No. Right. No. One of you's gonna jump. One of you's <laughs> gonna. One of you will. Anyways, uh, Batman the animated series is coming to prime time. All right. I think this would be my. Oh, this is ninety two. Might be the killing fish. I can't remember what episode it would be because I know they they aired this really awesome Joker episode in primetime because it was super adult compared to the rest of them. And I think it was Killing Fish. And that might be that episode they aired because I know when it premiered, they uh, the first episode uh, with Man Bat, uh, they, they aired that um, in primetime. They were airing it all over. Like Batman the Animated Series aired on Saturday morning. It aired on primetime Sunday and then it aired through the week in Fort Wayne aired during Happy's Place, um, a little uh-huh. show we had there, but um, they aired the hell out of that show to begin with. And I know a couple hit prime time, and it's a prime time worthy show. Nice. Um, on The Simpsons, Maggie Speaks. It's that episode. I love it. Do you know what her first word was? Because it teases. I remember. It's voiced by Elizabeth Taylor. She says one word, but they hype up Elizabeth Taylor is the voice of Maggie. And I remember it. I can't remember now. I watched that episode to see it. Daddy. Daddy. That was okay. That's basically exactly what she sounded like. It even sounded like Elizabeth Taylor. Here so comes another. That. Here comes another Brandon's personal and tangent thing. This is full of them. This is our last commercials. We're going out. With a bang <laughs> with these commercials. David Copperfield, the magic for the 90s, coming to Sioux Falls Arena December 16th. This is the show where he flies. I mean, he made the Statue of Liberty disappear. I was a huge David Copperfield fan <laughs> when I was a kid. Um, I went and saw this show on the tour. Did you really? Mm-hmm. I oh see. I saw. I saw him two or three times live, but this was one of them I saw. Did he fly? I he flew. He flew. He went right right over oh, us. It was amazing. awesome. It was awesome. He's like. <laughs> his little face. I thought David Copperfield was the coolest motherfucker. Like other kids are like athletes, Michael. That I'm like mm-hmm. magic guy. 
because he's a showman. He's he entertaining. Is. Yeah, and he was, a, and he had that look, and he was just so like weird and mysterious. And oh god, I was like, I thought he was awesome. I saw one show where he cut himself in half, and he like, oh wow, wrapped around. He like wrapped around his legs and hopped around the stage. I swear it was done with holograms or something because there was something weird in how he looked. But that guy was awesome. He always had this trick where he crashed his motorcycle, but then appeared in the middle of the crowd. He probably has a twin we don't know about mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. But like the man, yeah. Ooh, spoiler. Yeah. Sorry. But which one has the twin? Well, like Hugh Jackman twinning and killing, right? That's what you're talking oh, for about. For sure. It's yeah, basically. This what you're, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I. Michael Caine is just weird. Michael Caine was a Michael twin. Michael Caine, yeah. Know. Yeah. It's Scarlett Johansson had a twin too. Like it was great. Uh, they all did. That's basically the whole movie's freaking twins. They should right. call it twins, not twins. their own short twins. Twins with a Z. Movie. We can call it twins with a Z. Yeah. Um, just like the prestige, you know. <laughs> but yeah, so I loved it. Like I went and saw him. He would come to the Embassy Theater in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and we would go see David. Come, we get a program. I get a program, and I'd read all about his shit. Bought VHS tapes, like, and he'd have TV specials back in the day too. He'd be on TV. He'd get like a a big special, and you'd watch him, and you're like, "There's no way this was pre-recorded stuff. It's happening live." Right. Of, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he was awesome. And then came along, came this like David Blaine fucker. It was like not interesting at all. I just do shit. That's, I'm like prestige jackass. That's what David <laughs> Blaine does. And you know, then, like David Blaine? Uh, and then there's Chris Angel and stuff. But like David Mind Copperfield. Freak. I hate to gatekeep. <laughs> I hate to be old man, but David, David Copperfield. Well, I'm sure there's some people out there. It's like, well, my man was Houdini. This Copperfield kid. Yeah. Yeah, and he was it Claudia Schiffer. That was like his girlfriend. Oh wow! Cover, yeah, yeah. He was he was there. He was he was he's the still man. alive. Oh yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. That's good. Um, he's a cool, dude. Uh, but yeah, David. Why did they have a magic off? Like, get Chris Angel, <laughs> David Blaine, David. They did that with like that Jim Carrey and Steve Carell movie, right? Burt Wonderstone was that it? I didn't see it. It's not that good. Jim Carrey's really good in it, but uh, it's. it's not yeah. Uh, but you know, Vegas, Magic X, all that stuff. Um, David Copperfield, he's real. He's real. Everything he does is real. David Blaine is fake. Um, <laughs> Don't forget um, Coca Cola with Santa. Get your Santa can. Oh yeah, Santa cans. Santa cans. Uh, it's a big Trop- deal to get a Santa can. Tropicana Twister. You remember that where all the old people just didn't know how cool Tropicana Twister was? <laughs> oh my gosh! Wait, what's the commercial? I wrote it down. Where was it? Uh, Western Union. Mm-hmm. When you need the money, right? And there right. is the it shows a guy like looking at like I don't know, he's crown jewels type crap, and he bumps into this knight armor spiel. Yeah. And the axe drops and cuts a chair in half and he's got to, you know, get money. But I feel like I remember that commercial just because of the chair cutting in half. Yes. I totally remember that. Uh there's like kids listening in the grass for Sega. Mm-hmm. Sonic two. Sonic two's coming out. Uh, and then there's the the women orgasming over that white Grand Am. Oh my gosh! They're like, oh my god, what is this? It's a Pontiac. Oh my god! Better than everything else. Oh, show it driving. Well, there won't it. Yeah, like it was like the Kristen Wiig character on Saturday Night Live that can't keep a secret, <laughs> but with looking at a Grand Am. So. That was our commercials, the last American commercials. Um, this has been one of my favorite things. I know people have, listeners have liked it, uh, the commercials. I'm hoping maybe down the road we could find another show that had has commercials built in. Wouldn't that be something? But uh, yeah. yeah, that's, or we can just find, Jessica and I can just watch commercial reels and uh we talk Donnie about and i go down that rabbit hole all the time on youtube now i feel yeah. like there are like hour blocks of these things that it's amazing that happen I think we should we'll just, just like, call it bullshit <laughs> i think a commercial corner brought to you by bullshit yeah um corner. yeah but yeah so if you want jessica and i just talk about commercials for old commercials for who knows how long let me know let me know i'd be I'm down in. i'd be down I'd be down. I might That's just it. start hitting you up with a fake name. Like, do it, guys. All the commercials. <laughs> Man, like, I got 20 emails all linked to one IP address. <laughs> oh, no, Donnie, I told you to turn off the Wi-Fi. Uh, God. <laughs> Have him do it, too. And he's like, damn it. All right. Oh, so, 
Uh, this one that we start out with Jody. Uh, this is her finale. She won't be in the next episode, which I don't understand at all. There are things that need to be answered. Yeah. Um, she's dancing in the kitchen, jamming around. Uh, she's doing three months. We find out. Uh, and then Diz has forgotten about Lamont's class. He wants to watch a basketball game. And then he drops a 30 something reference, which I had to look up because I do not you remember that show. Oh, I did man. not. There's an actor that I just know is 30 something guy. I can't even tell you his name. He's got red hair. Uh, he had a beard on it and glasses um, and he's a well, pretty decently known actor, but I know only like 30 something guy. That's like what Ray I know him Harris. as. He's a redhead. He's a ginger. Hmm. But 30 something. Yeah. He drops that reference. So that's, I had to literally look it up. I'm like, this is ridiculous. And it, that was, show was on ABC. Yeah. It was a like my, Fox. It was like a parents watch it show. Yeah. Which was kind of funny to see a uh, Fox promote an ABC show. They don't typically do that. Like family guy might do it sometimes because they probably didn't guy. have a show to compare to because Fox was doing different shit. Like they weren't doing the, adult what adult drama was on fox their dramas were 21 drunk jump street 90210 the heights like these were their dramas they were all teen stuff yeah so they're trying to make it but they were maybe taking a dig being like look at these old squares and they're 30 somethings you know timothy busfield that might be it timothy or is busfield. it boothfield maybe boothfield i think it's busfield um or so peter horton i can't tell they all have gray hair instead of red hair now. oh I think it's Busfield. Um, so he agrees to go, but if it's boring, they're going to leave early. They're going to leave early. Um, <laughs> yeah, Lenny shows up at the auto place for JT to help fix his uncle's van, which we never find out what happens with that because uh, a woman comes out of the exhaust smoke. And, uh, <laughs> like well, a freaking Journey music video. Right. It, it catches JT's eye and he comes on strong. Like, And she's like, back the fuck off <laughs> kind mm-hmm. of and she's she spouts out some jibber jabber at him and then leaves and then lenny clay claims she's a witch because it's kind of like the sexy english accent yeah. but you don't know but it didn't sound necessarily english it was just really funky right. she had a sweet look she had like a snake necklace yeah uh cool rocker chick vibe or something but yeah it's tracy scoggin she's got like big eyes and yeah she's very pretty and yeah cat, very cat-like too she's very got a very feline look like quality to her um she ain't put up with no jt skis hell mm-hmm. no uh-uh. nope nobody does nobody should hope uh <laughs> and you know lenny's like you're cursed now jt he's like think you just got the he's like he says it like she's a witch and he's like think you just got the first letter wrong and then he closes the register on his finger yeah what you get you are cursed jt he's cursed he's cursed uh stan finds a girl out shopping with rita and hits on her posing as some expert on tiles are they at the tile shop are they at home depot are they at the, i thought they were at like some flea market outlet a flea market where they happen to have tile i guess and stan's yeah. an expert in that for some reason although rita knew more than stan did on tiles and colors so i don't i think they just had to put stan somewhere in this episode right right uh yeah, that's true. That is that, he, now it makes he's sense. Nowhere else in the episode to the very end when they right. all play. That's true. Um, Rita has a conversation with this lady and gives good advice to her. And we find out she's a dispatcher at the brewery. That's that's her job. Um, Rita's. We we knew she was at a brewery, but we didn't know what she did. Now we do. Uh, this woman is she works for City Lights Magazine. Ooh. And she needs an assistant and offers her an interview. Uh, Hope comes home and Rita's excited to tell her, but Hope has an interview for the same exact position <gasps> at City Lights. I told you when they clinked glasses in front of that fireplace, it was signifying. Mm-hmm. So Rita doesn't say anything. Hope goes, oh my gosh, I have this interview. And Rita just keeps it all bottled in. I was like, oh, awesome. If I was a girl, I probably would have been like, that's crazy. I literally, this just happened to me. I would go ahead and just say it. and not Jump let in it right now. Esther. Jump in right now and be like, what? Yeah, like that's so crazy. Oh my gosh, this is going to be really awkward. We'll figure it out. As opposed yeah. to sleeping on it for an entire night and then mm-hmm. deciding to tell her the next day. Yeah, because Alex tells her like, you should tell her. I'm like, yeah, Alex, yes. You yeah. do know some good things, Alex. Um, hope you find your dad one day. Uh, and 
he's like and he tells rita like tell her but you need to keep going for the job he's like why should you be the martyr and throw yourself on the sword and he goes throw your hat in the ring and may the best hat win he tries but hey you know the writer you know the writer was like throw your hat in the ring and let the best hat win or do you think the whole time he's like i don't care i don't care it's like we're getting do you think they wrote that week by week or did they have just i still don't know i need to know these things they probably had so they probably worked really hard in the pilot and had like two to three scripts after that in some stage of being written. Gotcha. And then they got, they probably got their pilot got greenlit and ordered for a front, uh, usually 11 to 13 episodes. And then depending on how the show's rating, cause they're not super confident about it. So depending on how the show's ratings are by maybe it's eighth week. Then they can green light the back. Um, there's probably scripts for beyond this episode of the Heights, uh, or beyond the final one, but they're probably a more like outliney stages. And uh, but um, they got to wait for the green light to do the back nine to get to 22 or 24 episodes. Gotcha. And they they, they don't get it. Um, we'll talk more about that uh, when we talk about the how it closes out next time. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where they're at. So. Um, this one could have been in terms of writing and shooting. This is probably around the time they knew they were done. So, yeah, I mean, it had some good points, I guess. I, they didn't give up. It didn't feel like they totally gave up. Right. In this one. So right. There was still hope. <laughs> well, she's in this episode. Yeah, she yeah. is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so Lamaze class, uh, Dizzy has an earpiece listening to the Knicks game. So I'm like, Wait, maybe the Heights is around New York somewhere? If he's into the Knicks, is he around Jersey? He's very Italian. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then we also saw mountains, but maybe it kind of looked like it was in the West. But right. then there's the Appalachian Mountains, so I don't know. True. They're never the the Heights are wherever you are. Mm-hmm. We are all in the Heights. Right. <laughs> uh in the Heights, uh, coming soon to uh, digital and uh, Blu-ray and HD, or you 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray. Yeah. Or out now. It might be when we air this. Um, Dizzy he has a lot of res- questions going on about this pregnancy. A lot mm-hmm. of questions. So like the point where the Lamont's teacher's like, shut the fuck up. He's like, caffeine's bad? That's crazy. What? Uh, the baby can hear? Are you sure? Yeah. He gets really into it. Uh, JT has some issues playing pool at Big Mike's. He fucks up a table. Ends up owing Big Mike a hundred bucks for it. Uh, Rita comes in to talk to Hope about the job offer. At uh, the track, JT and Dizzy run, and we hear uh, JT's giving Dizzy guitar lessons. Uh, Dizzy's obsessed with Lamont's class, and JT tries to woo some ladies running, and runs into some hurdles and falls down. And, you know uh, why he gets that? Because he's a Cause he's a, prick. he's a creep. Yeah, he's, he's like Dizzy, look at over here. Come over here, and Dizzy's like, "Dude, I'm taken." He's like, "Doesn't like, mean you can't look." Yeah, like, it doesn't mean so you can't creepy. enjoy the view. So creepy, dude. He's married. Just stop. Can you? And do, you're dating run? Hope. You are. <sighs> oh man. Uh, Rita has her interview, uh, only to find that she was crossed off the list because she was ineligible because she doesn't have a degree. Uh, but luckily she runs into the woman she saw at the flea market and she jumps her past the pre-screening, which is, um, what hope went through with yeah two different like pre-screenings. It sounded like, yeah. And, uh, Rita continues to impress with what's thrown at her. And in a brief exchange, uh, she gives her an assignment to bring back to her as part of her tasks. Um, Jody wants to watch the band rehearsal, but Diz is like, no, no, too loud. Cause he's. I've uh, been reading the, baby the book. Baby can hear, right? Yeah, baby can hear, and he's overly cautious. But so he's going crazy. Uh, at rehearsal, Rita shares what happened with Hope, who is continually more bummed about this job thing. And JT suggests she lets Hope see the reports that she has to help her out. Typical and, JT. How about you cut some corners and you just like you know man. get a head start? Like no, they weren't handed. Like, these to two Hope. had no drama until JT inserted the drama. Like, why even say that? Like, well, you can share it with her, then you can do it too, man. It's like no, no. Mm-mm. And Rita's not being a bitch. She's like, well, obviously, I was given. It was given to me. Yeah, from someone. So. Yeah, yeah. Which she's, sounds like Hope doesn't have to write a report. Sounds yeah. like it's a little bit easier for Hope. Right. Yeah. Rita's a little apprehensive about this whole thing, and JT electrocutes himself. 
into his amp. He but just it, keeps getting hurt. Doesn't all those quite curses. do the trick, though. Um, <laughs> Hope and JT, uh, they try to bone, but JT is apparently, uh, he's a smoker. Um, she goes, I thought you quit. He goes, I had one drag this morning, which means he probably had three cigarettes this morning. And uh, it's a bit rough and clumsy. And Hope's like, I didn't want our first time to be like this. It's like, Oh, I'm like, you guys haven't done it yet. Yeah. You guys, what are you guys, what's the hold up here? Um, you need a very special episode. Oh, but this is a dream. Cause JT's like, she's like, your hair's falling out and he's all bald and he wakes up and you know what, you know, you know how JT's even more of an asshole. The rebel flag. He's got a Confederate bed. flag in his oh, yeah. bedroom. Like what a shit stain all the way. I was like, uh, which to him, it probably meant like rock and roll and skitter, man. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like, Oh yeah. I was like, I saw that. I'm like, yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Uh, Diz and Jody asked the doc about loud music. She says it's fine. And that he needs to relax because it'll make a tense baby if it has a tense mama. So I like off, they Dizzy. did the biggest ultrasound, the classic ultrasound. Oh, joke yeah. When it's like, Oh, is that a boy? And then doctor's like, that's its hand. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you know, it's a penis, Ooh. right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I got I, my first child. I got really scared of the ultrasound because they're like, "Oh, there, there it is." Cool. I'm like, "Sweet, not twins. Awesome, cool." And then she goes, "Okay, now let's look around the forest for any others." I'm like, "Oh God, no, we're not." <laughs> I didn't think I actually have to do that. <laughs> I thought we were done. I thought we were done. That's funny. Yeah. Oh, but uh, JT shares about his curse with Alex, who toys with him. He's like. There's a supernatural game of pin the tail and the donkey going on, and guess who's the donkey? I'm like this. That analogy does not make sense. Why is it still JT and Alex all the time? Can't JT hang out with Lenny or anybody else? They're seeing, they're seeing each other on the sign. They're seeing. They have to be. Um, Rita works on her stuff. Hope wants tips on how to dress. Her second interview. There's some like mad tension going on here, and. Hope tries I to sh- liked the outfits that Hope had on. It was like oh, either God. dress like Blossom or Hillary Clinton. Oh, it's great. Those are the options. These are great. Um, and sh- she tries to screw with Rita about what she's writing. And then Rita disses on Hope's shoes. I'm like, this is, I like this. I it's like It's getting this. nasty. It's getting good. Uh, Hope drinks her sorrows as Rita comes to make peace and they continue to bicker. Big Mike breaks it up and they disperse and they leave their men in the dust. So uh, Alex and JT... They uh, meet outside their house, and Alex is a key because they aren't answering. Notice Alex is a key, but JT does not have a key. For obvious reasons. That's right. JT, uh, I probably bring another girl home. Right. To uh, Hope's place. Ugh. They, uh, they aren't home. They grab drinks from the fridge. A phone rings. JT picks up, talks to the magazine lady, and the job is down to the two of them. Oh, which... Um. The interview, uh, Hope goes first. Outside, JT burns his mouth with coffee. Uh, they see the witch drive by, chase her down. She speaks not in British and says she was just doing some dumb bullshit to get him to go away. And she goes, mm-hmm. if, if you have a girlfriend, what are you doing hitting on strangers in a muffler shop? And JT then like denies that Hope is his girlfriend. She's just a friend that's a girl. Yeah. Uh, it's Ooh. not like that. Yeah, and some cops come screaming by quickly, spooking JT, and she speaks some British and says, don't press your luck. <laughs> and, he'll never ooh, learn. He'll never learn. Uh, Hope and Rita sit at home watching the phone and waiting, and they decide to leave, and the woman shows up at their house, says it was a hard decision. Uh, they both recommended each other in their inter- final interviews, and then some nepotism bullshit happened, and the publisher hired his nephew for the job <laughs> instead. And the girls are happy and friends again. I'm like, wait a minute. I would be pissed. I'm like, still this more is better? concerned. Why did that lady go to their house to tell them in person? Is that something people did back in the early 90s before like the internet, cell yeah. phones and phones? Like, I thought I'd just come over here because I found out you both live together because in your <laughs> interviews, you botched them for each other. Right. Whatever. Yeah. And not botched like, them, just recommended the other person. Which one is it going to be? Uh, no, don't tell us. Yeah. So a little different. Um, the band then plays a cover of Feeling All Right by Three Dog mm-hmm. Night uh, with Stan. He gets to sing lead. And he did great. I want more Stan on the damn show. Yeah, it was good. Uh, 
Sounded real good. Yeah. And Alex is on bongos, hope on the tambourine and Rita gets a sax solo and they, they crisscross it with this like black and black and white jazz club thing frequently too. Um, and the girls clink wine in front of the fireplace. The end. <laughs> Perfect. So that's, that's everyone is everyone's still friends, right? No one's yeah. butthurt. Everything's fine. That's the last Jody's episode. Pregnant. Yeah. That's the last episode. Of the United States got to see the Heights. Gosh. This was it. This is the end for the United States. So, yeah, it's crazy. I can't believe they didn't show the last episode. Why not? The whole the heights all culminated into two friends competing for a job. Yeah, it was all about Alex, Rita, JT, and Hope. Basically, the entire series was around them. Right. Oh, but yeah. So yeah, that was a yes. Didn't Stan have like a girl he was seeing in like episode two? Um, he had kisses and she leaves or something. And I don't remember. He's had a lot of different kind of women. Like he had the, there was the, the woman that was the father of this kid. He was like friends with. And then there was, did he have a girlfriend, girlfriend? What and I don't know. Maybe it was just another girl. Maybe hell. Maybe it was Jody. Maybe he was walking and talking with Jody. <laughs> like Stan was like a strong focus of like the first episode we watched. And then mm-hmm. he didn't get like a story until like Lenny moved in. Right. Uh, just forgot about him, wrote him off. Yeah. Or had to focus on JT. I think that's this was the struggle of the show. They had too many things going on with too many characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does it happen? Had yeah. to focus. Yeah. Could you should have focused on like a five piece rock band, not a eight <laughs> piece, but hey, it's what they did. Um but yeah, this uh this gig's over. But till next time we play, Jessica, where can people keep up with ya? I'm over at the Bob and Tom show. You can find me on the Bob and Tom show bits and pieces podcast and on Twitter at JN Allsman. Instagram is at Jessica Allsman. All right. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Brandon 4 K U H D written work at Y. So blue.com. There's more from the brand Peter show this week, but until then, Jessica, how do you talk to an angel? I, I usually just try to grab my tin whistle oh, and I'll try to woo it like with a little, with a little bit of a, uh, some music a little and I'll never let go <laughs> <laughs> so silly <laughs> thank you for listening The Brandon Peters Show is a Creative Zombie Studios production. Produced by Brad Shoemaker and Brandon Peters. Written and edited by Brandon Peters. Announcer vocals by Jessica Alsman. Theme song by Metavari. Web design and show art by Brad Shoemaker with Brandon Peters. All music and clips featured in the episode are property of their respective studios and no infringement is intended. Additional information on this and other episodes at brandonpetershow.com. For any inquiries, press opportunities, or sponsorship, contact mail at brandonpetershow.com. The show is available on Apple Music, Spotify, or anywhere podcasts are found.